Hey there, Touches Under Programmers, Matthew here. So, in part one, we looked at what dictionaries were in Python and kind of got a kind of fundamental and rudimentary idea of what those were and why those mattered and how we kind of constructed them and built them and what that would look like. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look at a very specific example of how we might use them inside the context of touch. And we're going to kind of focus on a single example here um, because I think if we really pull this particular one apart, we'll start to see where and how that becomes really powerful and useful. Right, so the kind of idea here is that we'll use one as our kind of like conceptual anchor, and then I will turn you loose into the world of Touch Designer uh, to do a bunch of new and exciting things based on what you've learned here. Okay, so we're going to need a text dat. Whoa, a text dat. Uh, and then on top of that, we are going to get a text top. Whoa, swanky. I know, I can hardly uh, contain myself. Okay. Now, we, as we know, we've looked at before, this thing has got a ton of parameters. It's got, oh my goodness, uh, a list of parameters a mile and a half long. There are all sorts of things that live inside of this. So how might we think about um, kind of filling out those parameters, right? Because... Sometimes we have the option of actually like filling everything in manually ourselves, and sometimes we find ourselves in circumstances where we want scripts to be able to fill out pieces of information for us. So first, let's look at a very simple example of how we could do that with a dictionary, and then we'll look at something a little more exciting. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and edit the contents of this thing, and we're going to make a dictionary right out the gate, and we're going to call it a top uh, dictionary. Actually, what we really should call it is a text top dictionary, right? And we're going to go ahead and follow the, the usual rules, right? It's got to have curly brackets. We're going to use some uh, kind of like human indenting so we can see what's going on here. Now, I'm actually going to go ahead and and in this process, I'm going to rely on the same parameter names that my text top has. So, for example, my text top has a parameter like text in lowercase. It's got a parameter like font size X. It's got these alignment parameters, right? Align X and align Y. And I'm going to rely on those as my names. Now, that's not going to make a difference for us this time around. But as we get further down and we start to be doing things that are like a little bit more creative and a little bit more kind of like wiggly, giggly, googly fun, um, we're going to find uh, that that might be really useful. All right. So uh, we've got uh, text, right? And we also have font, this is a string, font size X, right? And these are all dictionary keys. So they've got colons, align X, align Y, uh, font color R, whoa, font color R, font color G, font color B, font alpha, bg color r, bg color g, bg color b, and you're going to say, Matt, how do you know all these? Well, I practiced, don't worry, so I would know what all these things were, uh, and bg alpha, right, um, and I've gone through, and I just happen to know that the, all of these things exist already, um, and I just want to get all those things written down first, and now I'm going to go back and tidy this up to make sure that I've got all of my ducks in a row here with all of my punctuation in the right place, and all the right kind of punctuation, and then we need to also make sure that we've made all of our keys into strings. Okay, okay, hoo-ha. So, first up, my text here, uh, let's go monkey. I mean, why not? Monkey's a fun enough thing to say. 
Uh, I'm going to make that 15 align 1, align y, 1. Now, if we look over here, we can see that center is 1, right? Left would be 0. So we've got to do like a little bit of like examination to figure out the right things for these parameters, and that's okay. And we're going to make this text red because we're just going to use really simple colors to get started here. Right? So this is going to be, the text is going to be red, the background is going to be black, and we're going to make sure that both of these have some alpha. Okay. Whew. So we've got a dictionary full of all of these properties that are associated with our text top. Okay, well, what, now what? Well, we've learned how to do a few other exciting things, right? So we're going to go ahead and create a new variable, target text, and we're going to point to that operator. So we're going to point at text 8, right, over here. That's our text, our target text. And then we also know right, that we can set the uh, parameters of this thing if we say target text dot par, right, so it's parameter text, for example, we're going to go ahead and let that be equal to our text top dictionary. And the key that we want is going to be text. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, try that just to see if it's going to work. Okay, so that worked. So now what we can do is we can come in here and we can add in the rest of these things, right? So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now we just need to do some editing, right? So first up, it would be font size X. Align X. You can start to see here why it would be really important to actually know what was going on. Align Y. And this is the kind of biggest headache part of this, right? It's just getting it set up. Font color R. And that's okay. We're going to just kind of knock this out. Font color G. Like a G. Uh, for those of you in another country, um, that is uh, a very silly reference to being a gangster. Um, like a, it's a colloquialism that doesn't translate, I'm sure. Um, but that is a silly joke for uh, those of us that live in a place where that would make sense. And if that doesn't make sense to you, I apologize because I'm sure that just sounded silly. And really what I'm doing is uh, BG, BG color like a G uh, is just filling in some time so that I can have some filling sound to go with all of this typing. Oh, there we go. Oh, all right. Whew. So, we've got all of our parameters in here. We know what our target is. Now, with any luck, right, we're going to be able to run this. And lo and behold, we changed all of those parameters at one go, just from this single script. Whoa. Swanky, my friends. That is super swanky. And that's, you know, we could do something silly, right? Like we could have two of these things. This guy over here and this over here. And we could make this one different. Like maybe this one's 20. Oh, 250 is too big. It's 20 and this is uh, cat. Cat. Um, and our font color is going to be green this time around, right? And the background alpha is going to be at 50%. Right. And so now we've got two of these. This is pretty cumbersome. 
right? Because I've got two scripts. I've got, this is like, I'm not thinking in this approach about how I might really take advantage of my dictionary because like we learned before, right? We learned it over here, right? We know that something uh, like this, we can have the same keys inside of dictionaries that have different names, right? And you, if you're scratching your head, that's okay. Don't worry. We're gonna just, uh, we're gonna make another example over here. And what we're gonna do this time, let's go ahead and edit these contents. Uh, and let's make sure that we've, we've changed this thing first. Text 11 is our target text, right? What we're gonna do here is we're gonna just think about this a little bit differently, right? We're gonna take all of this and we're gonna imagine that inside of our dictionary, the first thing that we have is actually uh, something like preset one. And preset one contains its own dictionary of things, right? Preset one has got all of these things inside of it. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. So now we've got preset one, and preset one contains all of these items. Because that means that we could do something like this, right? We could take preset one, and we could have a preset two. Whoa, revolutionary, and maybe we're gonna put monkey back in here, right? And its font size is gonna be 15 and monkey was red. And the background layer was 100% alpha, right? So now we've got two presets. So, all right, we need to make one other thing here, right? We need a, another thing to consider. So we need to know our uh, top preset. And this is going to be a key, right? Preset one. And now we're going to come through here and we're going to add one other key, right? So top preset, it's got to get added here. And remember, the reason that we're going to do this is that we're going to say, all right, the first thing that you're going to look up is we're going to figure out which one of these. And we're using top preset as a stand-in, right? It's a variable that we can change. So we can change this to be whatever we want that'll point to one of these two things. And then we look for the next item in here. Right? Da -da 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 -da. And we're going to add this and all of these. And hopefully we'll see why this is so sassy and exciting. And again, when we get to loops, we'll be able to actually reduce the structure of all of this a little bit more. But for right now, we're just learning it the hard way. Sometimes it's good to learn things the hard way. Okay, so preset one is cat. So we should see when we run this, cat, and all of the attributes that are assigned to that, right? So we could just change this to two. And we got monkey. But I feel like we could probably do better than that, right? We could probably make this a little bit cleaner so we don't have to keep monkeying about, haha, <laughs> you see what I did there? Uh, we don't have to keep monkeying about with that code. And right, and we might call this preset key. So I went ahead and changed the name of the stat. And now we're going to, instead of changing the string, we're gonna uh, point us to another operator, table, preset, key, right? So we're going to go ahead and point to another operator, and we just need to go ahead and specify that this is actually a value, right? We want to actually get that as a string. So we're going to point up here, 
And we're gonna use that to actually change what's going on down here. Let's make sure that we've got everything right here. So top resets that thing, great. So let's change this to two, right? Oops. Oh, right. One, uh-huh, sorry. Right, so now we're able to just edit this table. And now when we, when we run this script, we actually grab our other preset item. Now, we don't have to stop there, right? In fact, what you should do next is think about how you might take further advantage of this, right? So let's make preset three. Let's have dog. And uh, I don't know, let's make it different in some way, right? Uh, maybe it's like 80 and it's blue and it's on uh, a white background. Right, so now we've got another preset that we have access to. So now what we're able to do is now we're able to think not about editing this thing when we want to change. Now when we make a change, we just make our change up here and we run our script again. And we can kind of keep adding presets and adding presets and adding presets. And that's pretty darn swanky. That is uh, pretty stinking amazing and is really a lot of fun. Now, if that wasn't enough, right, we could do even uh, goofier things, right? Like we could use storage. We haven't talked about storage yet, um, but we'll talk about that in the future. We could use storage and put this whole dictionary in storage. We could actually think about how this might um, pertain to a bunch of different things, right? So we could imagine what if we had something like this, right? What if we had a text top that was maybe connected to uh, a level top? Oops, not a leap motion. A level. Right? And we could in here, we could go a step further, right? We might think that our preset is actually comprised of uh, a dictionary of dictionaries itself. Right, so maybe there's something in here called text top, and that's something, right? That's a dictionary in its own right. Oh my god, it's Inception! Right? So we've got a dictionary inside of this thing that's our text top. We might have another dictionary inside that's in here also, right? That's our level top. And our level top might have a number of different things that's associated with it, right? So our level's got like um, black level, invert. Let's just look at invert right now. We won't make this too crazy. I mean, this is already pretty crazy, but why not? An invert might have a value like 0 0.5, right? So now we've got to, we'd have to make a few other changes here uh, to a bunch of things, and that's okay. Let's just kind of like knock that out, right? Um, what's the best way to do that? Well, let's just go ahead and do it. All right, bear with me. I might speed this up to make it go faster. Okay, let's see if we got that. <clears throat> this thing needs a comma. Da, 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 da. Right, so that's a whole dictionary. That's a whole dictionary. That's a whole dictionary. That's um, got to be properly closed. That's good. That's good. Okay. Whew. Okay. So now we need to do a few other things in here also, right? So not only are we looking at uh, preset, right? So presets first, and then we actually need to know that we're looking at the text top, 
part of this. So we need another set of square, uh, square brackets. Text top. Oh boy. Oh, Nelly. If there's nothing wrong in here, it's going to be a miracle. And then finally, last but not least, we're going to add one other line here. And we're going to look at the level top. And we want invert instead. Whoa. Okay. Let's see, what about preset? One, I don't know. Oh, so many things that go wrong. Oh, it worked. I don't know how it worked, but it did. Woo. All right, let's try two. Okay, let's try three. Okay. It looks like invert didn't take hold. Ah, of course it didn't, because you know what? We missed one thing here. We forgot that this should be, so we've got our target text, but we need also a target level, right? And this is gonna be operator, operator, level one. Got ahead of ourselves, that happens. Level one, great. And then we don't wanna actually hit this thing, we wanna target our target level and it's R, it's parameter what, what, invert. That's the parameter that we actually want to uh, tag. Oh my goodness, excusing everybody. How foolish of me. So let's try again. Aha, right. And now, now what we're doing is something really interesting, right? Like, we might have a whole chain of operators and we can store a whole chunk of information about their presets, right? The kind of way that we want them to behave inside of uh, a set of dictionaries or just a dictionary, rather, that's held onto this way. And then we can actually start to drive whole chains of, of uh, things. Okay. That's enough to kind of like get us into trouble and hopefully leave you excited about what's possible and where we might go. Um, next up, we're gonna start to look at some of the other exciting pieces of how we can start to really take advantage of um, what's going on here in touch. We're gonna start to look at uh, executes, both chop executes and dat executes. We might look at uh, parameter executes, uh, maybe. Um, mostly we're going to look at chops and dats because that's where a bunch of stuff happens that's really important to us. Panel executes also, really. So once we start to get a handle on executes, then we're going to look at loops. Uh, and we've got both loops that we can do with regular lists, and we can also do loops with dictionaries. Um, we've got so much exciting stuff coming. So hopefully this is making sense. Hopefully this is kind of helping you level up just a little bit in terms of how you're using Python here inside of Touch Designer. And I hope you're as excited as I am about all this stuff. Anyway, thanks for listening, everybody. Have a great day and happy programming.